Hi friends, so welcome to lecture 41 on our helicopter dynamic series. We are somewhere at the midpoint on the course and I hope you are enjoying and benefiting from this course. And if so, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and you also like my videos because that's something I like very much and it keeps me motivated to keep creating more content. So again, today we are going to start discussing the BET and we are going to focus on lift and drag equations. I'm Dr. Anjan Ganguly. Now in the previous lecture, we had the airfoil section and we showed that this airfoil section is at some pitch angle theta relative to the plane of rotation or the zero lift line. So between the plane of rotation and the zero lift line, the angle is essentially theta. So the zero lift line is this line here. We are assuming a symmetric airfoil cross section. Now we'll discuss all the further notations as we go along in today's lecture. So let's start with this angle phi, which is essentially defined in terms of UP and UT as given here in terms of the tan. So tan of phi is UP by UT which you can see here. Now, this angle is essentially related to the inflow velocity. So you can clearly see here that UP has a very important role in this particular angle. And we will see later that UP is directly related to the V, which we have derived as the induced velocity. Now the next angle is alpha, and this is essentially theta minus phi. So this is theta minus phi. Now because of the presence of this velocity component up, the actual airflow it comes at some velocity u, and therefore, as far as the airfoil is concerned, it essentially sees alpha as the angle which is then used to generate lift and drag, okay? So now let us go further at the air velocity. The air velocity has two components, ut and up. Now ut is tangent to and up is perpendicular to the disc plane respectively. And therefore the resultant velocity would be the square root of the square of these two velocities, remember that we add these components and get the resultant velocity. So again, you can see that clearly here, this is u and that's going to be equal to up square plus ut square, as you can also see from this right angle triangle shown here. So these forces are produced by uh, the airflow which is taking place on top of this airfoil cross section. And we will denote the forces as lift and drag, L and D. These are normal and parallel to the resultant velocity U. So from our knowledge of fluid mechanics, we know that L is half rho U square CCL and D is half rho U square CCD, where CL and CD are the lift and drag coefficients respectively. Furthermore, rho is the density of air, which would be 1.225 kg per meter cube. C is the blade cord. Cl and Cd are the lift and drag coefficient for the particular airfoil section we are dealing with. Now, in general, Cl and Cd are going to be functions of alpha, Mach number, Reynolds number, and maybe some more parameters. So that's something you can obtain from table lookup and different kind of tables. Okay, so there are tables where CL and CD are tabulated with respect to this information, or there may be some kind of polynomial functions or generalized curve fits, which can give you these particular values for a given location you are at. So now let's go to the forces. So we clearly see here that L and D can be obtained. 
And now what is of importance is we calculate these forces Fx and Fz because these are the particular forces which are going to be required to calculate the thrust and the torque. So now from this graph here, you can clearly resolve these forces and you can get the particular value. So for example, Fz would be L into cos phi minus D into sine of phi. So like that, you can calculate these forces. Now to put it more clearly, I have drawn this diagram here and you can clearly see that Fc would be L cos phi, that's this component, minus D sine phi, that is this component. Similarly, Fx would be L into sine phi, that's this component here, plus D into cos phi, which is this component here. So why do we calculate Fx and Fz is that because these are normal and parallel to the disk plane and therefore they are useful for calculating the thrust and torque and finally torque will lead us to calculation of power. So that's what we are all interested in. We are interested in power. So in the next lecture I am going to discuss how we get actual expressions for thrust, torque and power. So I'll stop this lecture here, lecture 40. And again, I will invite you all to like my lectures and to also subscribe to my channel and share it with all the friends you know and your network at large. Thank you very much. I'll see you in my next video.